All right, next thing that every SOC analyst should know is egress traffic analysis. All right, I'm serious. Like, this is so not happening right now, and it so bothers me. Now, you would expect that, right, because of Rita and everything that we've been doing with active countermeasures, we'd be really big into network traffic analysis, and we are. And there's a number of ways that you can get involved, and I wanted to share with you a couple of things that will help you accelerate your SOC career. First one is Zeke, right? Somebody just popped in. You mean there's supposed to be more than one analyst for an entire organization? I am so sorry. But yes, right? All right, so here we go. With this, we, we love Zeke. And the cool thing about Zeke for you as a SOC analyst is it's something you can install at home. It's something that there's lots of resources and training that you can get learning how to use Zeke and the different like Zeke cookbook commands that you can run with. It has a massive user base, lots of support. It's very consistent. It is amazing, okay? And I talk about it here because your organization should have it. If it doesn't have it, it should be planning on getting it as quickly as possible, right? And I know that some organizations will be like, well, we're going to go with extra hop. We're going to go with dark trace. Uh, I, I, I think that that's neat, but I think the team needs to have a basic understanding of like packet captures and Zeek before they jump into those products. And this is kind of an endemic problem. And I know that this makes me sound old, but one of the big problems we have in the industry today is clouds. I like to yell at clouds. Clouds are a problem. Old man yells at clouds. But the big problem is we're buying a lot of products and these products are hyper advanced, but the people that are running the products don't know how the products work. In far too many socks, the only training that they give their analysts is how to use like Sentinel One, Cyber Reason, Silence, Carbon Black. They don't actually teach people how to do stuff at the core operating system level. They get, they, get, uh, they get Fortinet, or they're running Palo Alto, or they're running all these different tools and utilities on the network side, and they don't understand basics of packets and how network connections work. That's jumping way too far ahead, and it's going to really hobble you as a SOC analyst if you're running super awesome network tool, and you don't know what that tool is actually doing. So Zeek is a great way to get started. So egress traffic analysis, how would you do that? Full PCAP. I recommend getting started doing analysis with full PCAP. You're going to have to deal with it at some point in your career. The more you have this skill, like capturing packet captures and sharing packet captures via things like SSH, how do you deal with very large packet captures that are broken into hundreds of different files? These are problems that you're going to encounter because your tools will take you so far and then you basically, somebody just said, how do you get a SOC analyst job without understanding basics of networking? Right now, we are so understaffed in this industry, security, BAE, AC, that we, we're literally pulling people that can you know, spell cyber and they're getting thrown into jobs. And I, I think in a lot of ways, we're doing a tremendous disservice to them. And by the way, we have free network threat hunting training. If you want to learn the basics and fundamentals of some of the network stuff that we're talking about, it's free. So, so check it out. So learning how to deal with PCAPs and learning how to deal with full packet analysis using things like TCP dump is going to be huge. Wireshark, all of those tools for anybody that is a SOC analyst. Key, absolutely. And for me, working with firms, I, I'm spending a lot of time in the incidents that we're doing at BHIS I'm spending a lot of time walking people through how to create a basic packet capture. I'm spending a lot of time walking people through, like I'm like, oh, well, here's all the domains that were resolved. And people will say, how did you do that? I'm like, that's just Wireshark. It's this right here in statistics. And they're like, ooh, black magic. It's not. And somehow there's a disconnect for people coming in and they're not learning these core skills. And I know that there's some intro to security classes that are out there that don't teach these things. Like they'll teach you, spend a whole day on crypto. Why the hell do we need a whole day on crypto? They're not teaching the right skills off the gate. They're trying to teach skills that were important a decade ago. So we need to get better at some of these core skills as well. The next one is Security Onion. And I saw this one scroll by and, and Magula brought up, please learn uh, Berkeley Packet Filter as well. And absolutely correct. Magula is right on, right on, right on key. And we'll talk about where you can get some resources learning how to do these filters. And one of them is the uh, 
Um, one of them is the training that we do for network threat hunting as well. So Security Onion is another great distribution by Doug Burks and the team. And what's really, really, really cool is you can download it and run it for free. You can run it at home. And you're going to learn all kinds of skills by running this, right? You're going to learn Kibana. You're going to learn how to do Elk queries. You're going to learn uh, Sericata. You're going to learn, learn Snort. You're going to learn all of these different tools. And what's cool about everything in Security Onion is everything you learn in Security Onion is actually transferable to other tools. And what you're going to find, unfortunately, is you're going to find that you're going to be able to do something in Security Onion, and then you're going to go to Commercial Tool X, and you're going to be like, what is this? I, I can't do what I can do with Security Onion. And that's frustrating, right? That, that is very, very frustrating. So this is a way for you to develop the core skills that are transferred, but you're also going to run into, you're going to run into times where it's, you're going to have limitations, right? The, the commercial tool won't do everything that you want to do under the hood. But that's cool because if you're a SOC analyst and you get into a situation where you push the limits of what a tool can do, and now you're dropping down and you're using BroCut or you're using Zeek or you're carving through a PCAP, that's where people were popping it up. It's like, uh, oh, are you a wizard? Absolutely. It's absolutely something you want to be in that quote unquote wizard category that many people just aren't familiar with. And that's fun, right? right. We can actually do that. I just lost my Discord channel. There it is. Um, we can actually do that and we can get good and we can get good at home doing this on a home network. And by the way, we had an entire webcast on building a home network with full packet capture. We can get that up for you. So I've given you a couple of links. Both of them are from Active Countermeasures. And I want to share with you kind of what we've been doing at Active Countermeasures over the past couple of months, actually. So one of the things that we've been doing is we have a ton of different blogs on you know, monitoring one gig connections. But the big things I want you to look at are malware of the day. So we have tons of malware of the day packet samples that you can play with. Now, a lot of these are generated with cobalt strikes, malleable C2 profiles. And we generate these, we give you where the profile actually exists, and then we give you analysis with AI Hunter because that's the product we sell. But then we also give you the analysis with three tools like Rita. We give you the packet capture files so that you can practice going through and doing this analysis on these malware specimens in a safe fashion. And the, the samples are relatively small. And this is actually fairly close to what you do as a SOC analyst. If you have a workstation you think is compromised, you're going to fire up a packet capture and you're going to look at that packet capture of that particular malware specimen as well. The other link on here is the one that's our video blogs. Chris and Bill and myself and Keith and Ethan, we do a lot of free videos for getting people caught up to date with T Shark and how to do network threat hunting, data exfiltration, and detecting it with a single command. And then we also have our training classes that we're doing for free. Basically, we're bending over backwards, folks, to try to get it to the point where these core fundamentally skill, fundamental skills are available and accessible to everybody. Um, I've talked about this quite a bit. I'm sick and tired of entry-level gates in this industry, where if you want to get into security, you have to spend thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars on an intro security class. That's garbage. I've had it. I'm done. I'm over it. And that's why Chris and I, who have trained for years, we're spending a lot of time and effort doing free training classes. So that's why our intro to SOC class is pay what you want or pay what you can. That's why our intro to threat hunting class is free. That's why our intro to security class is free. The core fundamentals shouldn't cost anything at all. So next up, I, I'm not going to do the whole rant, uh, paranoid nerd. We're not, we're not going to do that whole thing, right? So the next thing is like dealing with logs. Logs are hard, okay? They're really, really, really difficult when you're looking at trying to get started in security and you're trying to do SOC analysis and you're trying to understand what's going on on Windows event logs. I am sorry. There is no easy way to do this if you're not capturing the right logs. Like if you're just looking at standard Windows event log security application and system logs, your host. Uh, you're, you're not, you're not going to have a good day at all. If you start getting into 
if you start if you start getting into sysmon then you're starting to get the proper logs and those things we will actually talk about in the intro class and we talk about in a lot more detail in the SOC class as well but here's the problem there's no log that says you've been hacked there's no 666 event log right on sysmon yep again just say yes make it happen and if you look at an example, and I always use this example, and I've used it for years, if you go in and you change the security policy on a system, it never says John Strand changed the security policy. What it says is John Strand invoked privileged use and system changed the system, the security policy. That's crazy. Like, why would it be that hard? You got to like piece a whole bunch of logs together to figure out what's going on. Also, whenever we're looking at the Verizon data breach reports, less than 5% of the DTECs and organizations, whenever they detect that they've been compromised, are actually coming from logs. So we're getting into huge problems with percentages. And yeah, like Linux logs, not much better. Bash logging, awesome. Turn it on on every system that you have. It's, it's great. All right, so what about user and entity behavioral analytics? Well, that's getting us better, but still, as a SOC analyst, I, I have this slide that talks about uh, false positives here in a second. And I, I sit down with SOC teams and they're like, yeah, our UEBA, it's, it's, uh, it's, yeah, it's just crazy. There's too many false positives. And when I sit down and I look at what's going on, they're not false positives. Like they're actual real things that are happening, like system accounts doing what system accounts do. But I, I think that a lot of people think that there's a lot of false positives because they feel uncomfortable with what it is telling them and they feel uncomfortable actually filtering the quote unquote false positives out. So if we're looking at the behavior of attacks, it requires us to have a better understanding of Active Directory and how these things communicate with each other, like internal password spray. So Logon Tracer is a cool tool for playing. Um, it, it's, not, it's really not a great tool for running an enterprise of 100,000, um, just 100,000 nodes, but it'll at least get you uh, like up to date on what types of things you EBA can detect. Like you can see one system, that is authenticating to literally hundreds of other computers. That's important. As a SOC analyst, you wanna be able to pull down that information and you wanna be able to see that, right? Um, and the key event IDs, if you're a SOC analyst, start here. And, and the reason why I, I started with these is these are the key ones that are used in log on trace. Sir. These are also the key event IDs that are used whenever you're using a commercial UEBA. These are the main ones that are used for detecting lateral movement attacks. So, and it's not even all six, right? The big ones you should be looking at are six, uh, 4624, log on successful, 4625, log on failure, 4768, Kerberos request, and then 4769, Kerberos service ticket request. You, you should know those, those four event IDs and read the TechNet articles on them and learn what they mean because whenever you're trying to troubleshoot a UEBA or trying to tr troubleshoot a log analysis tool, and it's doing detection on an environment, these are the absolute core event IDs that you need to know. There's other event IDs that are important. Don't, don't get me wrong, there are. But these are the main ones that are going to tell you the vast majority of lateral movement and like post-exploitation attack techniques that are gonna happen. So start here, right? Now, once again, we have a long class, two days, that we're gonna be talking about all these different things, but at a core, you need to understand these things because regardless of whatever tool you're using, you're gonna constantly coming back on this again and again and again and again. So I just saw this pop up, you know, we had a reference that just basically popped up. Uh, uh, Tavis basically said, we disagree on this. SMS two-factor authentication is harmful. Um, that's one of the things where I disagree with him just because Two factors better than no two factor. We can argue about what two factors best, but yeah, if you have the chance to have it, yeah, that's that's something. It's better than you know having standard password. And here I am. I might as well just start disagreeing with Bruce Schneier as well. Let's just disagree. I'll just disagree with all of the infosec luminaries. Just ride this all the way into the dirt.